And I'd like to welcome from uh, the Mile High Report, Mr. John Heath. John, how are you doing tonight, buddy? I'm doing well. I'm looking forward to the weekend. Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a fun weekend. Before we get to that, uh, well, actually, let's start right there. Uh, the, the Broncos are taking on uh, Jacksonville, uh, Jacksonville Jaguars this year or this weekend. I believe they're 28-point favorites. Uh, have you ever seen a spread like that in your time covering the NFL? Uh, no, they, they're actually saying that's the largest spread there's ever been in the history of the NFL. I believe in the 70s or 27 or and they ended up winning that game 52 to nothing. So we could be seeing some something similar like that this weekend. I don't think it would surprise anybody. Yeah, it seems like an incredible number and a huge thing to, to overcome. I guess in your in your opinion, is is that spread earned over the Jacksonville Jaguars? Yeah, I mean, not only in the fact that the Broncos have scored so many points, and, and up until last week they were dominating everybody they played. But the Jaguars have just played so poorly that they put themselves in that position as well. I mean, on Sunday, the Broncos scored 51 points, and through five games, the Jaguars' entire team has scored 51 points. So it's not just a reflection of how the Broncos earned it. It's a reflection, in my mind, of how bad of a season Jacksonville is having. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and we're joined here by uh, John Heath from Mile High Report. Let's talk about last Sunday's game. I mean, it took a uh, an interception by Tony Romo, as he has been known to do in the dime minutes of the game, to set up a field goal for the Broncos to come in and, and score that goal or score that, that, that those three points that put him on top. I guess, John, in, in your opinion, uh, did the Broncos earn that victory over the Cowboys last weekend? Well, I mean... They made plays in the end. Their defense, they were giving up a lot of games or a, a lot of yards, and they were giving up scores through the game. But when it came crunch time and when it came time to win the game, Danny Trevathan made a play and Prater converted the field goal. I mean, the, the, the Tony Rome made a play. He could have thrown a touchdown pass to Des Bryant, and the Cowboys could have won. And the earning a victory is in a term I really like, like – that's thrown around a lot. The team that okay. wins earned the victory because they got the job done. The team that loses didn't get the job done. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, let's talk about uh, at quarterback, Peyton Manning, uh, having one of the true the terrific seasons of all time. Did you expect him to come out and top what he's done in the past already with this season? I'm sorry, I, I missed that question. Did I expect what? Yeah, no. So Peyton Manning's had a terrific season uh, through through the year so far, and, and I, did you expect him to come out and even you know maybe playing the best football of his life at this stage of his career? Yeah, there, I I figured he would be at at last year's pace, maybe a little better. But honestly, I don't think anybody could have told you before this. Season, oh yeah, Peyton Manning is going to throw. 20 touchdown passes before he throws an interception <laughs> and break an NFL record for the most touchdowns through the first five games. If anybody could have foreseen that when he's 37 years old, I mean, they have something that I don't know about. Yeah, he's been absolutely fantastic. And with that in mind, I mean, the team's off to a very strong start. Is there a chance that somewhere down the line the head coach will maybe start pulling Paid Manning out perhaps the second half to rest him to keep him healthy? Uh, a few weeks ago, they pulled him for most of the fourth quarter. Okay. Um, as as the season goes on, I think in the fourth quarters they'll pull him, but in, unless it's a very very big lead, and we may see something like that this weekend in Jacksonville, I don't think they'll pull him for a whole half. Maybe even just give him the first drive of the second half and then put an Osweiler if the game's clearly in hand. But when back when Manning was with the Colts. One thing they would always do is they they would rest Manning the last two, last two or at least last game of the season, and then a lot of times they would lose their rhythm and then they would fall out of the playoffs very quickly. And so I think resting Manning may be something the Broncos want to avoid just because of his past history that hasn't worked out very well for him. We're talking with uh, John Heath from the Mile High Report. I guess, John, do you think that that's Peyton Manning will be the one to push the pace? Because he knows that to stay in rhythm, to stay in his groove, he'll want to stay in the games and get as many snaps as he can with game action. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, it's definitely Peyton. Even the other day at practice, they were talking to him about the spread and the possibility of sitting him, and he he said that the spread is completely irrelevant to me. We're playing a good NFL team. It's, he he says all he looks at that at is the game film, and Jaguars have a he said defense, and it's it's just one week at a time. And if there's anybody that's going to prepare and not overlook someone, it's Peyton, and he's never going to say this team isn't good enough for me to play this week. Uh, there's no doubt he's a true professional. Breaking down the Denver Broncos with John Heath from the Mile High Report. Um, if, well, a big a big issue for the Denver Broncos to keep him healthy is the work of the offensive line. How's the offensive line look so far through uh, five games for the Denver Broncos? Uh, they have looked brilliant, especially because it's a little bit of a patchwork offensive line. Brian Clady went down early. He's on IR now, and uh, they're on like their third center, but They've been protecting Manny very well. He only, he's only been sacked uh, five times, I believe, and they're, they're run blocking very well. No, Sean Moreno's been having a very good past few weeks on the ground, and Manning's obviously getting the job done through the air. So for an offensive line that's kind of been thrown together with a few guys plugged in here and there, they've been doing a very good job. You're talking about the uh, wide receiving group, uh, Wes Welker is a guy that uh, you know both Tom Brady and I, I believe Peyton Manning like to hit. Who are some of the other uh, dangerous targets that uh, have really evolved over this season so far that Peyton Manning loves to touch up with? Yeah, the thing that's so crazy is Welker had six touchdowns with New England last year. This year he already had seven wow. in five games. But He's only a piece of the puzzle in Denver. And the other guys, like you were mentioning, are Demarius Thomas, who's a freak athlete, Eric Decker, who's a nice route runner, and then Julius Thomas, the third-year tight end. He was injured his first two seasons in the league. But now that he's at full health and playing with Manning and finally getting a chance to start, he's, he's also had, had, um, he's at six touchdowns right now, which is tied for the NFL lead among tight ends. Thomas, Julius Thomas, Demarius Thomas, Eric Decker, and Wes Welker. When you put all those guys on the same team, it's no wonder that Manning's putting up the numbers he is right now. Oh, it's been incredible. It's fun to watch. So fun to watch. I'm not even a Broncos fan, and I still tune into these games. Uh, we're talking about the Denver Broncos with the Mile High Reports, uh, John Heath. John, the defense, although they, they gave up a lot of points last uh, weekend, uh, have been playing pretty solidly. Who is the leader on the defense for the Denver Broncos? Uh, right now, it's probably Wesley Woodyard, and their defense took a pretty slow line because Wesley Woodyard was hurt, Chris Harris was hurt, and Rob Harris was hurt. And this week, hopefully, again, you don't want to be overconfident, but hopefully this week, if those guys aren't able to suit up, they'll be able to overcome that. But going forward, when they have the Colts in Week 7 and as the season goes on down the stretch, guys like Woodyard and Harris and Harris are people they're going to need Woodyard, um, he was an outside linebacker, and then when they moved Nate Irving to outside, they put Woodyard inside. So he's been Denver's Mike linebacker. He calls the plays for them on defense. He he was a stud last year. He had like 117 tackles, and he's he's been having a very good year again. But he's a little dinged up with a neck injury he suffered against Dallas. Hopefully that won't be a problem for him going forward. Um, I'm wondering, Champ Bailey, has he still got uh, those quick feet that uh, we enjoyed watching so much earlier in his career? It's hard to say because he hasn't he hasn't been playing at all this season. He's, he was fully participating in practice today, and when he was asked if he was going to play on Sunday, he said that's the plan. So we'll see how he looks on Sunday. But, I mean, just judging from last year alone, obviously he's not – He's not as fast as he once was, and he, he can't keep up with the burners like Corey Smith like he used to be able to. But he's still a smart cornerback. I'd still take him over a large majority of the cornerbacks in the NFL, and he's still good enough to be a starter in Denver. So when he comes back, him and Dominic Rogers Cromartie on the other side and Chris Harris on the slot, Denver will have three very talented corners. 
Uh, it's, it's must must thing to have, no doubt. Especially again the playoffs. We're talking with the Mile High Reports, uh, John Heath. John, uh, you know the the Broncos got off to a great start, but there's always uh, some uh, you know, Achilles heel or an area of weakness for any team. Doesn't matter what sport. In your opinion, what would be that one area of weakness for the Denver Broncos this year? I mean, right at this moment, it's their pass defense. Okay. Camp is dinged up. Chris Harris is dinged up. Last week, they gave up. 500 passing yards and five touchdowns of Tony Romo. When you do that, it's hard to win football games. And uh, they squeaked by last year or last week against Dallas because one of their linebackers was able to make a play. But the, the secondary, especially the some of the younger corners and like uh, the Tony Carters on their defense, they need to step it up right now. But as the season goes on and they get guys like Champ Daly back and hopefully Chris Harris concussion and a problem going forward, when those guys get fully healthy, I think they can overcome that. But right now, I think it's their passing pass defense. Health is always a big issue for every, every NFL, NFL team. Now, John, uh, one last one for you. The AFC West uh, amazingly has two teams at 5-0. and I, I would not have predicted the Kansas City Chiefs to be 5-0 and at this point of the season, but Andy Reid has got those guys going along with quarterback Alex Smith. I don't know that the Raiders or the San Diego Chargers are a real threat. Um, in your opinion, uh, you know, how are the Chiefs keeping pace with the Denver Broncos in that AFC West? Well, for one thing, they haven't played Denver yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's spoken honestly, like a true though, fan, John. Honestly, though, when when Denver plays them in Arrowhead, I think that will be one of Denver's hardest games of the year. And if the Broncos only lose one game this season, I think it'll play the Chiefs when they when they play the Chiefs on the road. Really? I mean, yes, because Arrowhead's a tough place to play, and if there's one team that knows the Broncos, it's the Chiefs. But my concern with the Chiefs is they only have 128 points scored right now. The Broncos are a team that has 230 points. So as the season goes on, uh, Kansas City, if they're, they're going to have to be scoring points in bunches to keep up with teams like New England when Gronkowski gets back and the Colts with Andrew Luck. They're going to have to be, if, once they get into the playoffs, assuming they will, they're going to have to score a lot of points to um, stick with teams that are the powerhouses. So I'm not overly confident in the Chiefs right now, but at the moment they're tied for the lead in the AFC West, so kudos to them. Uh, it's amazing. You know, it's a great story. I, I love it. I, I always liked Andy Reid. Even though I'm a Giants fan, John, I always liked Andy Reid when he was in Philly. I mean, what can you say about that? You must be doing something right for a Giants fan to like you if you're a Philly Eagles coach. John, listen, I want to thank you for your time. I'm sure we'll be talking to you again further down the road this season uh, as the Broncos march along towards what they hope to be a long playoff run. Thank you for your time, sir, and we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you for having me.